three. We're panning. Wave. Hey. Hi. LOL. Okay. <clears throat> Two years ago, I got to spend a month working in Haiti with my best friend Madison. A few days after our, our arrival, we were sent to the market with the Haitian cooks to bring back the food for the following week. Everyone was looking at us, and I mean, we did kind of stick out. We had really white skin, weird clothes, and we didn't speak a word of Creole. But there was something else in their stares that was just different. After a while, Madison whispered to me, and she said, They know. And I was like, They know what? She said, They know that we're Americans. She went on to say that when she had been in Africa the past year, the people had been so full of joy despite their difficult circumstances because they didn't know any better. But in Haiti, where Miami is just a two-hour plane ride away, the people know how much we have in the U.S. They know that we will never go hungry or die of a curable disease. Our children won't die of malnutrition. But all these things are normal occurrences in Haiti and countless other third-world countries. There is no one solution to bring an end to famine and illness, but the use of GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, in the third world could be a good start. I want to show you that... GMOs, while they have a bad rep in the U.S., could be used to save countless lives in the future. Now, before I can tell you about how G GMOs could benefit the developing world, we need to see what the problem at hand is. Uh, GMOs are anything that have genetically modified um, DNA. An, an example of this are tomatoes. Um, they are used... Um, they're genetically modified to not soften because of an enzyme that is taken out of them. In the U.S., GMOs are usually seen as something to avoid, as researchers do not know what eating them could do over a long period of time. However, this doesn't mean that they should be completely discredited. Marie Morris states in her article, Public Views on GMOs, um, Deconstructing the Myths, published by the European Microbiology Organization's annual journal, states, Scientists do not know or understand the full extent of their work. They cannot associate the long-term consequences, meaning that the first world is simply speculating on what will happen. Now, when I say first world and third world, what exactly does that mean? Uh, the first terms first world, second world, and third world were developed during the Cold War, where the first world was the U.S. and its allies. The second world was the Soviet Union and its satellites, and the third world was everybody else. The Third World was largely neglected as the two superpowers um, fought it out during the Cold War, and so it was largely neglected, leading to many of the problems that it faces today. According to the European Microbiology Organization's annual journal, one in nine people are suffering from chronic undernourishment in today's world. It goes on to say that food distribution is not the main problem of famine. There is simply not enough food in countries um, that are hit by natural disasters. The African News Service Journal stated that over the past 10 years, 10,000 farmers have committed suicide due to poor harvest. And while most of us do not fear of dying from diseases like measles or mumps, citizens in third world countries um, fear dying from this every day. We know that there is hunger and starvation in the world, and we see that famine and illness are real problems in the majority of today's world. But what's the solution? For third world countries facing the risk of famine, GMOs are an un underutilized resource. The studies for the, the University of South African provide new data on the Health Services Research Transit Journal speaks to how crops can help agricultural households um, relieve certain uh, financial burdens, such as insect repellent and replenishing destroyed crops. Not only can these crops help families, but governments of third world countries will benefit monetarily as well because more wealth is circulating in the given country. There is less risk of economic recessions leading to healthier citizens um, needing less medical help. Um, the reason genetically modified crop or the reason transgenic crops are responsible are, are, are a responsible choice for certain economies is due to their ability to um, have their built in insect repellent. Um, they also are used to, they can be modified to withstand environmental turmoil such as drought or, excess, or excessive winds. Genetically modifying crops can help lead to large crop, crop supplies to fend against things like droughts and insects and oversaturation. Breakthrough, breakthroughs in biotechnology have uh, given scientists the ability to um, genetically modify crops to have vaccines in them, meaning that there would be less distribu 
less need to have medical attention. Um, there would also be no risk of unsterilized needles, and the process of vaccinating would become much less stressful and much less effective, and much more effective. GMOs should be used in the developing world as a means of reducing famine, malnutrition, financial burdens, and disease. We as Americans do not fear of dying from disease or starvation, but does this mean that we shouldn't care about those who live with these fears? The population of the world is growing at such a rapid pace that the United Nations' most recent estimates of what the world population would be in 2050 is 40, no, not 40, 400 million more than what is previously estimated in 2010. This just means there will be more people's, need, more people's basic needs will need to be met. Dr. Mercedes de Oz of the nu Department of Nutrition for the Health and Development in the World Health Organization stated that the future of American of human societies relies on children being able to achieve their optimal physical growth and development. The first world is largely responsible for what the third world, for how underdeveloped the third world is. The first thing we can do is educate ourselves about the pros and cons of GMOs and get involved in the conversation and how and when, when GMOs should be used to prevent famine, upheaval, and unrest, and even more war can be prevented because more and better food is being provided. We can vote um, legislators into office. Um, they can have the power to make these changes. These simple steps will help create a world where people don't fear of dying of hunger or, or curable illness. We can now see simply providing more food will, um, will, build, will help lead to a more peaceful future. We know that famine, malnutrition, and disease are still major problems in the underdeveloped in underdeveloped countries, and while there is no clear solution to this problem, using GMOs to prevent crops from dying and engineering food to contain vitamins and vaccines could be life-saving. We as U.S. citizens have a responsibility to care for the lives of the people we share this planet with. In the U.S., we do not fear of dying of disease or under mal malnutrition. We do not fear of dying of hunger. People in the U.S. say GMOs are unhealthy and dangerous to consume, but I've been eating them my whole life. Now, I'm not saying that they won't have an effect on me in the future, but I'd rather give someone the chance to live to age 19 than die at age 5. Thank you. Panning again. Whoop, whoop, whoop.